God bless you, everyone. Minister Dave here to tell you about baptism that we're going to be doing very soon. And uh, the type of apparel you'll be wearing is anything white. Uh, just make sure it's not thin because you'll be wet. Um, so uh, just wear anything that's white. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. Um, so we look forward to seeing you dress very nicely for the baptism. This uh, video is to serve as um, in addition to the training that was already done, but it gives a nice overview. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is why should we be considering getting baptized? Well, first of all, we're following Christ. So to, in order to understand the reason for being water baptized, it's important to carefully consider what the Bible says about it. You see, Jesus himself was baptized. He was not a sinner, yet he humbled himself in obedience to identify with us and to give us an example to follow. Now we see, for example, in Mark chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, where it says, uh, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that's in Mark chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Now, another reason why we should consider getting baptized is it's an act of obedience. So we talked about the first reason, which was following Christ. The second one is it's an act of obedience. You see, water baptism is an act of faith and obedience to the commands of Jesus. Therefore, and I'm going to read to you uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20, where it says, Therefore, and go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. Now, we've just talked about two reasons why we should consider getting baptized, which number one was following Christ. The other one is an act of obedience. The next one I'm going to talk about is it's a public declaration. So number three is it's a public declaration. You see, baptism declares that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a public confession of your faith in and commitment to Jesus Christ. It is the next step after salvation through repentance and faith, and is an important foundation for the Christian life. Then he said, I'm going to read to you. Um, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, I'm going to read to you Mark chapter 16, verse 16, where it says, then he said, go into the world, go, where, go everywhere and announce the message of God's good news to one and all. Whoever believes and is baptized is saved. Whoever refuses to believe is damned. And that's in Mark chapter 16, verse 16. So we read three scriptures as to why we should consider getting baptized. You can write them down. The first one is Mark chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. The next one was Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. And finally, it was Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Now, the next topic we're going to talk about is what is the meaning and significance of baptism? So let me share that with you. Baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection, okay? So it's a move from death to life. We're going to be talking about that. Our entrance into the water during baptism identifies us with Christ's death on the cross, his burial in the tomb, and his resurrection from the dead. Baptism does not make you a believer. It shows that you already are one. Baptism does not save you. Only your faith in Christ does that. Okay, so let's take a look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. Again, that's Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14, where it says, Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins 
forgiven, the slate wiped clean, the old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. And that's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. Now, there's another meaning and significance of baptism. We talked about, number one, a move from death to life. Now we're talking about a brand new life, a brand new life. So let's uh, take a look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Um, and that's in chapter 2 verse of, of Corinthians, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. And then I'll read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, where it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And again, that's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. So Paul explains how we are to live this new life. This is the Apostle Paul. He has explained how we are to live in this new life. So let's take a look at that in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And that's in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. Now let's take a look at um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 through 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 through 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now take a look. We first talked about Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4, before reading Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 through 16. Now, this death that the Apostle Paul mentions is the death to my old life, where I choose to stop living according to my sinful human nature and tendencies. I can then begin to walk in the newness of life by obeying God's commandments. It is a symbol of your new life as a Christian, okay? And being baptized does not free us from temptation, but we can, as we were reading with uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 through 16. Now let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. I'll read that to you now, where it says, we can live the rest of our life for the will of God as Jesus did. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And then I said, behold, I have become in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. Now think of this. With such purpose of heart, God will open his word to us so that we can run on the way of his commandments. This new life will result in us reaping the blessings of God rather than the consequences of sin. You see, baptism is like a wedding ring. It is the outward symbol of commitment you made in your heart, a commitment that has to be followed through and lived out on a daily basis. Here is one way to, to explain baptism. Baptism is a symbol. It is meant to show the world that you love, trust, and have put your hopes in Jesus Christ. It is like a wedding ring. Let's say, let's imagine, now I am married, but let's say I'm not married right now. Let's use that as an example. But if I put a wedding ring on my finger, would that make me married? No, of course not. In the same way, I can be baptized in a church, but that doesn't make me a true believer in Christ. Imagine that I really was married, and I am. My wife and I really did go through the marriage ceremony, but I just didn't have my ring on my finger. Would that mean I wasn't married? No. 
Of course. So I would still be married. In the same way, I can still be a believer in Christ, but not baptized. And my sins are still paid for and forgiven by God. But imagine that I was truly married and I really, really loved my wife. Would, would I wear my wedding ring? Of course. So I would love my wife and want the whole world to know it. And that's why I do wear my wedding ring. In the same way, if I have trusted Christ to save me from sin, he is the, the Lord and joy of my life. And then I want everyone to know about it. So baptism is a statement to everyone who sees it, that I have trusted Christ for my salvation and I am committed to living for him. So let's take a look at what we've been talking about. We've been talking about all the things about baptism. We have talked about why I should be considered getting baptized. We talked about the meaning and significance of baptism. Okay. Now we are talking about how we are to be baptized and who should be baptized. First of all, let's talk about who should be baptized. Every person who has made the decision to be baptized should be baptized. Okay. Um, in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 through 39, Part of it says, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, a person who has made a lifetime commitment to follow uh, Jesus, obey the word, and live a new life is a candidate to be baptized. That's what we're talking about here. Such ones are repentant and want to be free from their sin. This was the cause with the Jews who had crucified Jesus when they heard uh, the Apostle Peter uh, speak. So now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And again, that's in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 through 39. So as with the Jews mentioned, there, may, there are many people today who are sorry for their past sins and have purpose to live a life pleasing to God. Though it is evident that a certain maturity is needed to make such decisions. The proper attitude of heart is the second main criterion for deciding uh, deciding to be baptized at any age. There are no references to infants being baptized in the Bible. We believe in baptizing children when they're old enough, when they're old enough to understand what it means and make a personal declaration of belief. Usually this is at the age of 12 years old. Now, let's talk about how we are to be baptized. As per the example of Jesus, by being immersed in water, the word baptized comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse or dip under water. Every baptism in the Bible by immersion under water, the book of Acts shows us this was the norm for every believer. The Bible first mentions baptism in its accounts of John the Baptist. This was under the old covenant when the baptism was for the remission of sins. I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And that is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. With the establishment of the new covenant because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, baptism is now more about um, baptism is more, more about being um, related to the forgiveness of sins. It is a covenant to life with the life of a disciple before God. It's a statement. See, now Peter compares baptism to the flood in Noah's time. First of Peter, chapter 3, verse 18 through 21 says, the Bible says of Noah's time, and this is what it says. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only for evil continually. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, just where it says, just as the waters of the flood put an end to this evil in the Old Testament, baptism represents to the end of living uh, a self-centered life of doing my own will and beginning a new life of doing the will of God in the New Testament. Now, what we do at the baptism is first we set the atmosphere. So you will see the pastors praying before people are going to be called to enter into the water. Then as one person is brought forth, um, there is a, a brief statement, a brief prayer, and they are dipped in the water as a cleansing. And it's a statement 
of who they are in Christ. After everyone has been baptized, then it is sealed when the pastors once again pray for what has happened. So the baptisms of everyone is then finally sealed. So it's a three-step process. First, the atmosphere, then the ceremonial act, and then finally it is sealed. And that is our short lesson on baptism. My name is Minister Dave.